Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to talk to you about a little feature that I've been using more and more with clients, and that is the ability to use variables inside of HTTP or .rest files. These are files that allow me to execute pure HTTP requests so I can test my APIs without having to use a tool. Fully supported in Visual Studio 2022, I think 19 as well, but certainly 2022, and it's also supported in Visual Studio Code, though the features we're going to talk about I think are Visual Studio only. Just as a reminder, I work with different clients. If you're a company that might need my help with architectural or code reviews or designing some components or just training your staff, hit me up at sean.wildermuth.com. On to today's episode. So I have a little project here called Free Billing, and it includes several sections. I'm actually using Aspire to do it, so you're going to be seeing this project more and more over the coming weeks. But we're going to just focus on this API project because I have a number of APIs. I'm using minimal APIs here that I write. Let's just look at the simplest one, which is this get customers, and I'm using a repo to get the customers and spit them out. All really simple things, but I'd like to be able to test them without just testing them in the client-side JavaScript app, the view app. You can create files called .http or .rest. They're both the same, just matters which one you prefer. And you can construct gets, posts, puts, deletes, those sorts of things, so that you can test your applications. And so let's run this project real quick. And if I have this request, you know, you might imagine that this is going to be localhost 8000. Let's go ahead and just send that request. You can see it executes that. And I have another video that talks about this more in length. I want to talk about something more interesting than that. And that is one of the things that when I originally did that video, the tool hadn't yet added this. And this is the ability to have some global variables. These are ones that are built in. And if we start with double braces, you'll see that it gives you a list. Of, and these are standard built-in ones that you want to create a date time here, a GUID. And the one I'm going to be using most is this project URL. So whatever the project URL is, it's going to inject it in there. So our request still unsurprisingly works. If I look at the details of an individual one, same thing, right? Now, the way this works, just as a really brief, if I wanted to use headers, I can just add the headers. So let's say accept application, right? And I could do all of those. And these is modeled after actual HTTP requests. So whatever this gets converted into is actually executed. So with a blank line between it, I could also give it a body if this were a post or put or delete, right? Not super interesting yet. But what I'd like to do is create some variables, right? I'm a programmer, so an invariably, uh, didn't mean the pun, but I'll take it. You can create variables. So you just use an at sign and then the name of some variable. And I'll just say customer number. I'm just going to give it some value, and these are just going to be replaceable. So I'll do that too there. Let's say I had a lot of these, and I wanted to look at the same one over and over again. With that double brace, I'm also going to be able to see my custom variable, right? And this will continue to work because it's doing that substitution, the actual request. If we look at that request, we'll see that it just inserted the two in there for us, right? And this has been supported. This works great. The thing that's new, some of the way this worked changed a little between 2019 and 2022, but I'm going to show you the 2022 version. And that is I'd like to be able to share these, right? I might have information here that I want to inject and use the same variable over and over again, right? And the way to do that is very easily, let's say, go to uh, employees here, right? Might need to just go customer number equals two again, then I can use it in this file. I'm not really happy with that. The trick is that you can see up here in the right hand corner is a little hidden drop down that says, What environment? Environment. That's kind of an interesting idea. So I'm going to create a file at my project level and I'm going to call this HTTP client env.json. And what this is going to allow you to do is just create some simple JSON. And the top level elements are different environments you might want to test. So let's say you had dev and staging, right? Not a great example of how you'd want to do that, but you can have different environments. So here I might put default customer number, make that two. 
And you could have a number of these. And I might, over here in staging, make it four, right? Have di different environments. But what does this do? By creating this, when I go back to my HTTP file, and look at env, nothing shows up. Well, that's concerning, right? The reason is it only reads these when you open up these HTTP files right now. Probably will change. And so let's go ahead and open up that customer one again. And now we have these two environments. So I'll go ahead and say dev, and instead of customer number, I can now use default customer number. So when I execute this, I'm gonna get that ID of two, and if I change my environment, execute it again, it'll be that number four, right? And so in this way, even if I wanted to go to, let's say the customer projects, which is a different API I have, let's do the same thing here. I have these different APIs, and because they're at the level of what I need, I can change it to one of the environments and then go ahead and use it here as well. So this is cross file and you could even do it cross project because these are searched from the folder that the HTTP file is in up through the parent directory. So you could have it in my case, I'm putting it in the API project, but you could have it at the root of the repo as well, or even a higher level if you needed. And so let's just test this part, right? I have it as env and when I execute this, we're gonna see that I'm getting a certain type of data here. And if I went to staging, I should get a different set of data, only one of them there, because I'm looking at the default customer number for these different environments. I'd be happy with this on its own. But we have a problem. What if what we really want in here, let's go to customer's API, authorization bearer, and then some magic string, right? This isn't anything I'm gonna to wanna to check in. This file, the HTTP client, will probably be checked in because you're gonna be using it. But how do you deal with this as secrets? And there's actually a kind of a clever way. I'm gonna copy and paste to make a copy of this. And won't let me rename things while we're running. It'll let me copy it, but won't let me actually rename it when we're running. So I stopped it from running. And it's gonna be the same name here, but it's the ended.user. I'm going to change the extension and you'll see it's actually nested here in the UI. And because I have a GitHub ignore file to ignore this kind of file, it's not going to check it in. That's the important part is that is an ignored file because this is machine by machine basis. You don't want to check in any sort of secrets. And this allows you to come in here and it's going to have the same information, right? But I'm not going to override any. These are read top down. So it's going to read the dot user file and override anything. So here I'm going to go ahead and just make one called bear and I'll put in some magic string that obviously isn't going to work. And if we come back here and let's go ahead and run it again. And I'll go ahead and put myself in dev. I should be able to do the same thing here. So when I execute this, my application doesn't care about bearer tokens right now, but we'll see in the request that we have that authorization bearer shoved in here. And so again, the idea is that you have an HTTP client, JSON, that defines anything you wanna share across those HTTP files and a dot user file for anything that might be something you don't wanna check in. And so just like app settings and app settings development, except that you're not gonna include this dot user file, everyone will have their own copy on their own machine with their own secrets. This way you can really do some magical things with these HTTP files to be able to share some different information about how you want to execute things. Make sense? So this is a very small feature that some of you may use, but I find it quite interesting on larger projects that I'm using where I'm testing manually a lot of these different pieces. I probably will also write integration tests to test this stuff, but that's not really the point here. The point is as I'm doing development, having a quick way to iterate on a specific API to see whether it's working or not working or be able to reproduce bugs. I find this really, really useful. So thanks for watching another coding short. If you've gotten this far, a like, subscribe, comment, all of that is super welcome. I'll include a link to this project. It's gonna be out on GitHub. If you wanna take a look at it, super not done, but it'll include this detail of how we're using these files in case you wanna see how it's actually working. One note, if you do get this project right now, because I'm using Aspire in this project, it only works in the preview of 2022. By the time you watch this, it may be the release version of 2024 or whatever they end up naming it. Because it's using Aspire, it won't even open in the retail versions of Visual Studio 2022 right now. One last plug, go to my website, sean.wildermuth.com and see the different things I can do to help your company. I am accepting new clients as we speak. And so let me know. 
has been Sean Woldermuth for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time.